Hi, this is Lisa, and I want to show you how to use SmartArt that's available in Microsoft Office in order to facilitate brainstorming activities in um, a classroom setting. So I've just got a PowerPoint open, and whenever I open a PowerPoint, the first thing I do is get rid of the text boxes that are there. So what I'm left with is a blank canvas, like you see here. So I'm going to click on the Insert tab, and then I'm going to click Smart Art. You see it has that green arrow and then a list of bullet points. When you click that, it opens up this menu of options that you have of all the Smart Art that's already built into the program. And I'm using PowerPoint, but you could use Word. I just find PowerPoint a little easier to work with than Word when I'm using anything visual. So the default is it shows you all of the Smart Art graphics available. But this is a pretty robust list. So if we go through, you can see there are a lot of them. And that can be overwhelming. So luckily, they've divided it up into different categories. So for instance, let's pick Cycle. These are all the Smart Art options that are available that are categorized as cycles. And so if you're going to be discussing something that is a cycle, this would be obviously the great pla a great place to choose. So how it works is you just double click on the one that you want and it shows up on your screen. Now it showed up in all blue, all the same color. And if you aren't going to use color, then that's absolutely fine. Even within that monochromatic option, there are still different choices along here. As you see, as I choose them in the ribbon, and then this arrow goes down and there are even more that give all kinds of shading and that turn it different ways and that lay it out. But if I am not going to print it, if I'm just going to use it as a reminder of what I'm going to draw on a chalkboard or a whiteboard, none of that really helps me. Um, but if I'm going to print it, then it might. So the other option I can do if I'm going to print it is that I can change the color. Now I can change the color to just be a black line drawing like this, or I can change it into one of these more colorful modes, um, like rainbows or different colors of shades of different kinds. And then even once I've done that, all of those other options along here are available to me as well. Now, when I want to use one with color, but I don't want it quite as noticeable, then I can select a single color and it will make the different sections, different shades of the same or tints of the same color. Now, these are editable, so if you are going to print it, you can type in whatever you want in the boxes and print them out. So if you want to draw some kind of diagram yourself and fill it out yourself, then you could create it first in here, type in the words you're going to use, and then recreate that yourself in, in front of a class. But if you want to use this for really what I'm discussing today brainstorming ideas, then you won't really need to do that because your class is going to be providing that for you. Now there are a couple of other things you can do here in the in the Smart Art feature. For one thing, you can over here add a shape. And so you can see that it can make it bigger. You can also add bullets and you can add text panes. And text panes then are where it's going to type in, I'll just type in gobbledygook and you can see. So you can edit the text over here in the text pane and each one corresponds to a different shape. So watch how I click through to the different bullet point. It will highlight a different one of the shapes within the smart art graphic. It's easier to edit text in the text pane than it is to try to double click in here and type. So if you are going to create it with text in it, I recommend using the text pane. Now there are a couple of other things that you can do. You can demote different things. So you can make some bigger or smaller. And then obviously you can just delete shapes as well. And when you do, it automatically resizes 
and it also deletes the connectors. So you see how I have this arrow here and one in between each of the four shapes. So I'm going to delete this smart art graphic and I'm going to insert another one just to show you what some of the other choices are. So one of the ones that's often helpful with brainstorming is just lists and the list one that's my favorite is this one. It's fairly straightforward and I like it because it's really easy to recreate. Anybody can draw kind of just a down arrow and then a couple bullet points next to it. So this is one to keep in mind if you're looking at a list. I'm going to insert another slide and you see that when I insert the slide it shows up with these boxes. I'm just going to get rid of them. It's how I always start. So another one that is common to be used in brainstorming is process. If this happens, then that happens, and then this happens after it. And you'll see that here, the one I like to use for lists shows up in process as well. And that's one of the things that happens in the smart art graphic categories is that some of the things show up in multiple categories. But in the process category, my favorite is this one. And I like it because it's this big arrow and then boxes within it. And I like how the big arrow kind of sends the direction, but yet the boxes give me space to write. So when I recreate this on a board, either a chalkboard or a whiteboard, I draw the arrow over almost the entire width of the space that I have, and then I put large boxes, um, maybe five, six boxes across the whole arrow inside of it. Now, you see that in this one, the arrow doesn't go past this box, but I can expand it. So if you're going to print it, you can make it do that as well. This is um, stretchable. Now, when you have found the smart art that you like, then what's really helpful, and see so you can move the shapes around, what's really helpful is to then change the size of your PowerPoint deck. So I go to page setup, and I am going to change this size to um, be letter paper. So in the drop down menu, I choose letter paper and my width 11 and then eight and a half. And then what I'm going to do, so now I have an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. And actually I'm gonna go back to page setup and I'm going to change it to portrait. So now I have an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. And it, it when I print it, it will print on an normal piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smart art choices that I like. So let me go back to this one. I'm going to copy it just by selecting it and pressing control C. And I'm going to put on a single slide different options for smart art designs that I like. So I might do probably four or so, just ones that I think I might use. Hierarchy is also one that's really helpful to show how things are related to each other. And so I'm going to put these on the same page. I can put different colors on them if I'm going to print in color and want it to be pretty, but I don't need to. Really what I'm creating is a cheat sheet for myself so that when I do have the class brainstorming, then <clears throat> excuse me, then I have something to look at to, sh to remind myself what to draw. So I also like to use, I don't think I have this one in here, and this is one I use quite frequently. So it's got the, um, a circle with something in the middle. Oops. See, I selected the shape rather than an entire um, smart art graphic, which is what made it not... Um, take the whole thing. So let me make sure I get it all collected. And I'll do the same here by clicking on the corner and make sure I get that four-way arrow going. So once I get all of the smart art graphics that I want, and keep in mind this is an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper, so they're going to print out fairly large, then I can just print this slide. And I'm going to delete this other slide that I created because now I really if I print it it's just going to print this I really just have this one page I'm going to print this and I can keep it with me in my material so that I can look at it as a cheat sheet to remind me of what kinds of things I might want to draw
So the smart art can be really helpful whether you're printing things out and having students actually write on it themselves and fill it in as an individual or a group assignment or whether you are going to recreate it on a board. Either way, smart art can serve as a wonderful template or an idea springboard. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial and I hope it was helpful to you.